What's up, guys? It's Caliber here. Yeah, the beast. And I'm Taro. Excuse my voice. I'm really sick. <coughs> so sick. Deathly sick. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Uh, but uh, what are we coming to talk about today, babe? So, we're continuing our Halloween theme. And we're going to talk about something that's always, like, bothered me since I was, like, a child. <laughs> and that is... um. The stigma and propaganda around people trying to murder your children using Halloween candy or to try and give them drugs. <coughs> now, I'm gonna don't get me wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna pin in this. I'm gonna preface this. Of course, check your children's candy. I'm not telling you not to. I just find all the posts from those fucking soccer moms being like, Yeah, no, 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 freaking boycott trick-or-treating because there's a possibility of getting frogs with your candy. I think I have a higher likely possibility of getting a free puppy in my candy than free drugs. <laughs> I want a free puppy for Halloween. But, um, so I, I found, it's on HalloweenLove.com. I found an article <coughs> about where this came from, why it exists, and stuff like that. So in 19, I'm going to probably skip over a couple of these, but this is the first one. 1959, Dr. William Shane, a California dentist, handed out around 450 laxatives to unsuspecting trick-or-treaters on Halloween of 1959. While it seemed laxatives are far from a deadly prank, there were at least 30 children with experience extreme clear colon that night and one who was reported hospitalized. No one knows why the dentist chose to emphasize trick over treat. When the damage was done, the myth of tampering with candy began to spread. We can blame a damn dentist. In the skips to 1970, someone named Kevin Tross, a five-year-old from Detroit, went into a coma and died on November 2nd the cause of death was suspected heroin overdose. The drug was found sprinkled on the child's Halloween candy. Was this the first true case of poison treats ending in death? Police later determined the child had accidentally ingested the heroin after finding a gun stash. In an attempt to cover for the man, the family staged the tempered candy to try and fool authorities. It didn't work, but not before news reports of the dangers of trick-or-treating already aired. Uh, the most notorious case involved an eight-year-old boy from Texas who passed after consuming pixie sticks laced with cyanide. The child's parents were grief-stricken. The father, who had taken his son and a few of his friends out trick-or-treating the night before, attempted to help police find the house where the pixie sticks were given out. It took only a few days for investigators to locate the true culprit, the boy's father. Not long before Halloween, the man had taken out life insurance policies on both his children. He was said to have posted to co-workers that his, that his financial situation was supposed to take a turn for the better. The man, Ronald O'Brien, was convicted and sentenced to death after a mere hour-long jury deliberation. He was executed in 1984. <coughs> the two deaths so far, and both were family-related. So, um, I, I want to add something on that. You have a higher likelihood of your family member killing you than some random stranger. Apparently. Well, here, here's something that's, like, always bothered me. Bothered me, and it bothered my mom, too. Like, don't get me wrong, my mom checked through all of my candy when I was a kid. And, like, anything that was open, like, discolored, was thrown away. But it was more or less thrown away on the premise that, you know, it just wasn't good candy. That, you know, someone had just kept all the candy they didn't want to eat for, like, a year, and then they gave it out to trick-or-treaters, trick trick which a lot of people do. <clears throat> so if it was opened or, like, whatever, like, even if you find, like, an open can or something like that, like an open bottle at the grocery store, you don't buy it. Like, you don't consume something that's open. And it's not necessarily because someone may have poisoned it, but, I mean, contaminants, man. <laughs> you don't know where that's been. I'm pretty sure, like, you don't know if that person washed their damn hands, you get E. coli. <laughs> yeah, well, I could say, uh, as I got older, I mean, 
I was old enough to uh, check my own candy, but I, I never did that. Hey, but I'm still alive. Do as I say and not as I do. Well, no, I did that too. So, this is almost done. It says the myth continues. These cases led to panic among parents throughout the 80s, fearful their children will become potential victims to twisted minds. This was one of the reasons that my very own parents did not allow me to go trick or treating. I'm guessing this is the first who wrote the article. For much of my youth, the fact is that despite no record cases of death by poison candy from a stranger on Halloween, the mess still lingers. The mist, the mess. <laughs> the mist still lingers, and is still perpetuated by the media all the time. So, there's more there. I already gave you the website, so you can go look it up later. But even like, so <clears throat> my mom, especially, she was like, like her thing wasn't so much. That you know it was gonna like it was gonna be drugs. She like never thought it was gonna be drugs, and neither do I because uh, drugs are expensive. I'm not sure if anyone knows that. But, uh, no one in their right mind ever is going to give free drugs to your child when that child doesn't know where they got them. The chances of them actually ingesting them are slim to none, and. Uh, they lose so much money. <clears throat> if you gave one pill to every child, if you like 300 kids that come to your door, you've lost 300 pills. I believe the, the range for like an Oxycontin is anywhere from like 7 to $15 a pill. Jeez. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> That's a bad. No, honestly. We watch a lot of drug shows. <laughs> oh, you can look it up online. No one cares. Um, but... That's a lot of money to, to lose overnight. <laughs> and none of those kids are going to come back because they're not going to know where they got the high from. If they ever ingest it, which they probably won't. Because one, most pills look like pills. Uh, two, uh, the little chalky candies normally get chucked to the side anyway. So, <laughs> you are losing. Like, I don't I ever... Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. I get the whole, like, here, here especially, um, not especially, but, um, when I was growing up and I was trick-or-treating, if anyone, like, gave us anything, like, homemade, unless we knew them specifically, we didn't keep it for the simple fact that we didn't know what was in it. Um, there could have, like, if my sister got, like, a Rice Krispie Square, she hates peanut butter. So if she'd gotten like an off-colored rice crispy square, for all we know it's a peanut butter rice crispy square. Because a lot of kids like peanut butter, but she doesn't. So and there's a lot of things to factor in. And it's just not worth the time. So you just get rid of it. So I don't know. I mean, do you have kids? Do you check their candy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I check their candy. I mean, that's just common sense. You would check your can the candy. But again, it's not like I'm checking them because I honestly believe there's going to be a razor blade or needles in there, which I'm sure there's been cases, obviously. There's, oh, God. I mean, but in small amounts. And, you know, it can happen to anyone. I understand that. And that's why, I, I'm, again, we're not saying, as I, I don't think any of us are saying don't check your kid's candy. Uh, again, I think we're kind of re that you should do it for other reasons, too, uh, or more specifically, uh, candy that is opened or has, like, airflow getting into them, you, one becomes bad, they can, they can get a bad case of uh, food poisoning, any type of things like that. Um, it's yeah. more of a hygienic thing. You, you do that with your normal grocery shopping effort, you know, from, from most points, you um you're, you're gonna, you go to the I mean, you're not you gonna, you're not gonna sit here and eat meat that looks green. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. So I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously check your kids' candy to make sure that it's you know good, as in it, it looks like a good piece of candy. Um, or you can do my method, and uh, all the chocolate goes to daddy, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kids get the stuff that I don't like. <laughs> Yes. I do have one thing that I don't think a lot of parents think about. Um, 
If your child receives foreign candy, I strongly suggest getting rid of it for a couple reasons. Um, you have no idea what's in it. It's foreign. A lot of foreign candy is spicy. Yep. And as much as it's fun to, you know, eat a fireball once in a while or like cinnamon hearts, <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to, your kid accidentally eating a ghost pepper candy. Okay. I can see people tampering like that. See, I well, see like the prank the thing, side of it. Is that you know? international candy is often significantly cheaper than traditional candy. It goes on sale more because not a lot of people buy it. It's a very niche market at a lot of grocery stores. So you see like those big containers go on sale for not a lot of money. And right. I, I remember receiving a fair amount of foreign candy when I was a kid and I, I never ate it because my mom didn't know what was in it. And there's also certain types of candy you typically won't find them in Canada. You can find them in the States. There's like a Japanese candy called White Rabbit. Uh, it's also referred to as a suicide candy, as there is a chemical in there that has been known to kill people. Is that and actually a I'm thing? Would, it's sort of a thing. I mean, it, it used to be a thing. I don't know if it still is. Don't quote me on that. But the point is, you don't know what's in it. And I don't think it's so much, you know someone being malicious as much as them being ignorant. They're just picking up colorful candy and not knowing what it is. Because it's in a different language. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, and this is actually on the long lines of Canada, because we can we can actually get like imports of Coffee Crisp and all that. Uh, if your child is handed Coffee Crisps, take that away from them. It'll just make them hyper and you, don't, you really don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Coffee Crisp so has a high amount of caffeine in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, another interesting thing, since we're also talking about trick-or-treating. Um, if you live in the States, apparently you guys trick-or-treat during the day? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. And not on Halloween. Yes. Each uh, town has their own thing. It depends on the township. So, where I live... <clears throat> huh? I, I actually wanted to touch on the pill thing, so obviously we all have mental disorders here. I don't know, Beast, are you on any medication for it? Zoloft. Okay, well, I don't know what yeah. Zoloft is. Um, but I, me and Taro, is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, that's Yeah, remind, I'll stay away from that. Um, One more. Walmart has it. <laughs> I don't, out of all the fucking places, Walmart has it. Walmart would carry shit like that. Walmart wants their customers to kill themselves. No, I'm just kidding. No, suicide's not a joke, guys. So let's let's be serious here. But on a serious note, going back to the, the whole pill thing, I take pills on a daily basis. I, I take my uh, amitriptyline and I also take my suprazidone. I'm sorry, I don't find... I, I, I'm not going to look at a pill and be like, ooh, that looks like a delicious fucking pill. Right, right. Well, the, the thing is that you have kids like as young as like three, and the difference between prescription medication and street medication is um, currently, by the way, uh, what I'm about to say is legal where I live, I have cannabis gummies in my freezer right now. Like awesome. little gummies that have cannabis in them. <clears throat> so I mean, it's highly possible for drugs to look like candy, but I'm sorry, they were expensive. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. Give them to no snot nose brat. I I don't see anyone anyone with half a brain. I do, I just don't see them handing out edibles. I it's hard to that's... find pot at a good price, and edibles at an even good, greater price. So there's no way somebody's handing out edibles. That's just that's not <laughs> happening. That's unrealistic. Stop spreading the misinformation. Yeah. Anyway, what I was saying about trick or treating, they cut me off. Um, where I live, which is southern Ontario, um, we trick or treat Halloween, like traditional trick or treat, on Halloween. 
from like when the sun is just going down to when the last quartz light goes off. I think the latest I went out trick or treating was like close to one. And I started at like four thirty five, like right after school. The yeah. last quartz light is out. <laughs> I don't know necessarily if we if we have a time that it ends. I haven't been trick or treating in years, but I I think the reason they they do it a little bit early now is because people are getting older and people want to go to bed a lot earlier. Yeah, and then I it's a, it's also a different world compared to where we were growing up. Like when I was growing up, it, it it's the same way. It was the same way it is up there now. Yeah, I have one last thing to add. And then we can be done. If a teenager shows up at your door trick or treating, just give them some fucking candy. Um, honestly, I'd rather see freaking 14, 15, 16, 17. Fuck, I will give candy to any motherfucker who shows up at my door. Uh, well, I'm gonna need to show up at your door. I will give them candy because you know what? I would much rather them be trick or treating than egging my damn house. Or stealing another kid's candy. Or, yeah, or, or scaring a small child and stealing their candy. You know, like Halloween folklore tells us. Um, or smash I, I don't care. Show, show up. I like, I, I don't care if you're freaking 80. If you want candy that badly, come to my damn door and I will give you some candy. But you know, the best part about being an adult is you can go out and buy your own fucking candy so you don't have to worry about trick or treating. Yeah, I know, but I mean... That's probably what I have my grandparents do, is just buy me a fucking bag of candy and I'll just pick out with you guys. Well, I mean, it anyway. just, it's just... A, it's just... No. It's beggars by for crying out loud. That's what it's for. I mean, why, why try to put an age limit on it? It's supposed to have fun. It's yeah, fun I, for all ages. You know, I actually, I, I want to talk about that before we go. I actually do want to talk about that because I've seen uh, several cities put an age limit. I know for one it was anyone who was over the age of 13 they can... Let me look it up real quick. I know I, I can do it. All. The, I don't think you need the exact number. What he's talking about is if they're over the age of 13 them or by proxy probably their parents will receive a fine for trick-or-treating over the age of 13. And, and they can, it's also slapped with a misdemeanor. Yeah. And they could also go to jail for it. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. That is stupid. <coughs> I'm glad Louisiana isn't one of those stupid states that's doing this whole tobacco because I know my sister wants to go trick-or-treating. It's dumb. I mean... Let your candy's not good. Honestly, honestly, I have a very small story, and then we will be done. I swear to God, guys. <laughs> when I was like, <clears throat> oh, how old was I? I was probably around thirteen or fourteen. My mom wasn't going with me anymore. I was just with my friends, and um, there was this like super, super creepy guy, like wandering around one of the streets. Like, super fucking creepy. And um, we saw this, like, group of, like, 12th graders trick-or-treating. And we're, like, little ninth graders. I know you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. I think it's, like, freshman and... Yeah. What's the last year? Sophomore? Senior. Senior. Well, I never okay. finished school, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Whatever. If you're American, little freshmen and this, this group of, like, senior boys... And it was me and two of my friends who were also female. And, you know, we, like, went up to them and we were like, Hi, we don't know you. There's this creepy guy behind us. And uh, can we, like, hang out with you guys for a little bit? So we have these, like, big, like, 17, 18-year-old guys around us. And we're, like, 14, 13-year-old girls. The guy screwed off. Like, he, he's like, oh. And he, like, left. And he had been, like, following different groups of girls for a while so i mean it might it might be good to have those older people out there because scary stuff happens even when parents are looking scary stuff happens 
Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's, it's a harsh reality. But I mean, I know for a fact that if I see someone that, that like looks weird or anything like that picking up a damn child, I am hitting them. Which, as uh, hard as I can. <laughs> what? Which brings me to my next thing. Um, a lot of people may not know this, but child predators and child molesters are excluded from that holiday. Yeah. Oh, I know. That doesn't stop them from skulking around, though. They really no, don't. it doesn't. Usually, uh, typically on Halloween, they're supposed to be inside with the door locks and their lights <clears throat> off. Yeah. But they don't but fucking anyway. follow that shit. But uh, it, it's just a little fun fact. So if you enjoy Halloween, yeah. don't get don't get convicted of a felony. Go in groups. Go in groups. <laughs> they do travel in groups. Stay safe, take your candy, go in groups. That's Although, <laughs> one thing I do have to add, a pretty it, 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 to any of the Last of Us fans out there, best Halloween fucking costume is a clicker or a bloater. Mainly a clicker. Clickers are fucking creepy. She she's gonna try and uh prank me with the clicker sound I showed her. But yeah, but uh that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to Tarot Storm. And don't forget to subscribe to S13 underscore the beast. Anyways guys, this is Storm Family signing out.